All right, you beautiful, lovely people, hip, cool cats, everybody. My name is Kit. This is Chicago Reacts. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and hit that ring bell notification. That way, all you lovely, beautiful people are made aware. When we upload new content, you guessed it, upon our YouTube channel. And today, 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 we have ourselves a fun video to check out. It is titled none other than Why Does the U.S. Military Still Use Pump Action Shotguns by Grand Thumb? Uh... Well, first of all, please be sure to support the original content creator, Grantham. And um, I'll tell you why. Because it's cool. All right, that's it. Video's over. Bye. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, we're going to find out why the U.S. military still uses pump-action shotguns. Number one, it's awesome. All right, but anyways, anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Let's go check it out. Please be sure to support the original content creator. It's the right thing to do. It's It's the right thing to do. It's one thing to do. I don't know why, why I went black there for a second, but let's enjoy this video in a three, a two, and an uno. That shotgun was a band. Never mind. You know what? That's awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Everything about this is beautiful. This video is all you need. 32 seconds because it's awesome. You know, ever since World War I, we've just done the most American thing in the world, and that is bringing a pump action shotgun to war. That's and in right. fact, the United States military still uses pump action shotguns. They use weapons like this right here. We have the Mossberg. 590 Alpha 1. The question is, why does the U U.S. military still use a pump-action shotgun? Well, today in Grantham, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the effectiveness of them. We're going to talk about what they're used for. And, of course, we're going to show you good old-fashioned war crimes. War crimes. Yay! But before we get into it, we, of course, have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel, who is Who Micah. That is Primary Arms, providing you with any optics you could ever want to commit war crimes on your shotgun with. Ah. Now, this particular one doesn't have fixed any rail, but whatever optics you could want, and so much more. We love their optics that they come out with, and they are amazing. You have to go and check out Primary Arms and tell them that you, uh, you love us. Love them. Love them. And yeah. of course, we can't forget Night Vision Network. If you're looking to buy Night Vision, if you're looking to rent Night Vision for whatever it may be, Night Vision Network is your place to go to. We recommend Night Vision because if you use a flashlight, you're going to give away your position to other, other men, and that is gay. So Yeah, you don't want to do that. You want to cover it up. Make sure that you get yourself some Night Vision. And if you want to get better at shooting, we recommend Dry Fire. So we recommend Mantis. Mantis will turn your weapon into a dry fire machine. All of my Mantis products have been stolen by my employees because they are so good. I actually love them quite a bit. Go check out Mantis and all ammunition is provided for by AAC. A big thank you to them. But with all that being said, shotgun ammo is cheap and talk is cheaper. Yeah. You might think to yourself, I don't need a shotgun. I don't need to train a shotgun, but you know what? Just like fashion trends, shotguns always end up wearing their ugly little heads. So right here. No, it's not ugly. It's beautiful. We have the original military shotgun, well, pump shotgun. And that is the Winchester 1897. Yeah, Winchester. And as you can see, nothing changes. Things are just simply reinvented. Right here we have the 590 Alpha 1, which is what we're going to be talking about. And then, of course, we have a more specialized shotgun, which is the 870 MCS right here. Good. Shotgun is a... I love it. Very interesting weapon that is a very specialized weapon, whether it be extremely close quarters or we're finding a lot of new uses for shotguns, whether it be from breaching, but more especially with the advent of the amount of drones in the air, shotguns are becoming more pertinent than ever. Shotguns are some of the best defense against drones. So, no yes, and when the machines do rise up and they will, and that shotgun might be the one thing to save us. Because after all, drones, artificial intelligence, AI taking jobs, you know, Amazon. Supposedly there was that big strike. People worried about automation taking over. Listen, uh, listen, man. 
soon these robots realize that they're not getting paid and that they're being screwed over, yes, you better believe it. And some dumb geniuses are giving the robo-dog flamethrowers and machine guns. On the one hand, that's cool. But you know what? I don't know. Maybe six months down the road, somewhere in 2025, I'm minding my own business, drinking you know, some water, keeping my head on a swivel in the mean streets of Chicago, and next thing you know, boom, I run into an Ed 209. And I swear to God, I do not just want to be just shot up by an Ed 209. I'm not in the mood for that, folks. Not in the mood. No matter what you may think about shotguns, they are here. They are, yes. at least for now, here to stay for a very long time. Let's talk about the capabilities of shotguns. Let's talk about what makes them so good. Let's talk about why the military continues to use the 590 Alpha 1. First yes. thing we're gonna demonstrate with the 590 Alpha 1, we're gonna show how quick a shotgun can be. So right here, we have your typical military, your typical defensive load buckshot. Buckshot is nine pellets or eight pellets in the case of the double op buck that we have right here weighs a little bit less than nine millimeter but again you have eight to nine of them and they're traveling about 1100 feet per second that is a lot of lead onto a target at once so you can see putting just a few rounds into a target is a really good way of ensuring that people get into the forever box and they never wake up beep good good so at the range we're at that doesn't even have time to spread out a lot of people think with buckshot that the tighter your choke, the tighter your pattern is going to be. That's not the case of buckshot. Mm. It completely depends on the wad. And the federal flight control wads are, as you can see, freaking wild. You'll see how far a shot I was gonna can say, be. Can deadly. you shoot it at like 100? You sure, certainly can. But, Michael, let's see if you're faster than me. I think you are. All right. Ah. You know what? A full day of shooting hundreds of rounds of these, you need some Excedrin. What sucks is that. Like, so you only needed one round in the chest. So you put, did him dirty and you like hit him almost in the dick. Just, yeah, man, it's messed up. Don't shoot the dick. As you can see, we have a lot of power behind the shotgun. We have a lot of payload delivered. So we have those same military rounds. We're now gonna fire at 100 yards. We're gonna see what type of pattern that we get on paper slash a human sized target. Yeah, but nobody was using shotguns at 100 yards. What's crazy about it is early in the, um, war in Iraq and Afghanistan, some individuals in the breaching role, which is what the shotgun was originally used for, uh, did just have a shotgun. So because of that, you saw some pretty wild shots being made with shotguns. And certain Marines also are just carrying the Benelli M4s, same thing. So the employment of uh, buckshot at 100, or slugs like we'll show in a little bit, definitely happens. You think you're actually gonna hit that? Yeah. All right. Here you go. I'm gonna hit something. Okay, so we have a nine pellet gun. And uh, of those nine, we had four impact at 100. Oh! Does that mean a little bit lower? Um, I would say if the rest probably hit somewhere in the leg and the femur, uh, that's death right there. So, yeah. is the shotgun effective out to 100? Yes, and in fact, it can be pushed past 100. Damn. This high. Right? Dude, I thought that hit. Damn. <laughs> okay, so 180. I think 180's, yeah. 180, we're past it, but what's cool is like. That's pretty badass right there. If you got a crowd of really bad people and you need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's and, like, and it's you're, like and, that, uh, <laughs> it's like the scene in Black Hawk Down where they're in, they're in the helicopter and then they peek over and just like, just start <laughs> blasting everyone. It's the uh, meme where it's like the guy wearing level four plates and then it's like all of the double up buck heading for his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> What's really ah. cool about the shotgun is you're delivering all this power, but you, the shotgun can make those good, precise, long hits. However, it's not as precise as a rifle. Because of that, if I'm shooting somebody while moving, it's a little bit easier actually to get my hits on a target. So we're gonna move while shooting that target right there and you can see how easy it is to make your impacts. You ready? Yep. Damn. Damn. Beautiful. Even though I wasn't completely on all those shots, I still was getting five, six pellets per impact. This is a very effective weapon. You can see why the shotgun is still used, at least in CQB. Now we're going to show you slugs. So another thing when it comes to shotgun. Slugs. There you go. This is breaching. Breaching is huge. Um, went through the breacher school. 
learned all that goodness and the military law enforcement what's taught civilian side it's going to be different but shotguns are heavily used within the breaching category so right here we have a specialized breacher there's a couple very interesting things when it comes to breaching that i want to talk about first off you're not using slugs you're not using buck when it comes to breaching you're using actually so right here we have one of your typical little smb rounds right here Ooh. it's not as powerful as some of the rounds out there you're going to want to tailor the breaching round for the type of door that you're going into there are breaching rounds that can breach you know as soon as america brought the shotgun into the into the war into any war the rest of the world is wondering, like, oh, my God, what, what are y'all shooting at with that shotgun? A lot of things. A lot of things. Steel doors, and there are breaching rounds I can do wood doors. So right here, we have our typical wood door. So we're breaching on something like that. There's a couple things you want to think about. Your lock, the type of frame, the type of door you have are all going to matter in how you're angling your shotgun. So on your typical wood door, wood frame it's going to be a 45 and a 45 so if we consider this to be our lock our handle our door whatever is that's preventing us from getting into that door the big thing is going to be evaluating the door and seeing what the weak points are going to be is it going to be the hinges is it going to be the lock itself we're going to go with the lock for right now so if i'm on a wall right here here's my lock it's a wall here's my door what I need to do when I come up to it is the first thing I, I don't want to do is I don't want to just step in front of this door like this, like an idiot, no. and shoot that because I am in that doorway. I could get shot. Yeah. So we want to step off to the side. There are a lot of ways to handle this. Generally, using your thumb to employ it, you can use your wrist to employ it. I prefer thumb. You're going to stick it in. You're going to go 45 down, yeah. 45 in. What we typically do is we have oh. one dry round in there or carrying on an empty chamber. So when you walk up, that's when you're going to load it, you're going to fire. If you're in a military situation, sometimes that second round is absolutely needed. Rack it. Rack that out. Yeah. You've blown the lock at that point. Kick back. In law enforcement, they like to kick forward. I like to save my knees because I'm already broken. That's oh, what you're going to do. One thing to note as well, you don't want to seal that barrel against the material. That's going to yeah. cause extremely excessive recoil it's another reason for the 45 besides the design of the lock and of the door mm -hmm. that way it's not sealing against the door and you're not so that means whenever you gotta breach a door guys and gals do it at a 45 degree angle getting that insane recoil off of it and as you can see the recoil from our breachers is really not that intense whoa i'm watching it again breachers is really not that intense Right. Wait. Uh, the only thing this is good for is a glory <laughs> hole. Um, ah. So there's a lot about breaching. We're only kind of barely getting into it, but just understand that that is a huge reason that shotguns are carried. On your bigger shotguns, like we have right here, because of the angle you need to get in on the gun, you can yeah. see that wrist angle kind of sucks. Yeah. A lot of people will have the tendency to run the gun upside down, thumb in there, that way it's recoiling in a better manner. And again, everything changes if I'm on the opposite side of that door Damn. from like right here. So a lot when it comes to breaching, just understand it is a large part of the employment of shotguns. But the shorter barrel actually- What's makes... the polymer rounds for, training? Polymer is actually one of the breaching materials used. So like this? Thumb, and use like your this. thumb. Use yep. your thumb. Yep. How come your thumb? You'll see with the recoil. Really? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> it feels so wrong. It does. All right. Hold on. Yo. Oh yeah, that's actually really easy. No, it's not bad at all. Get a ballistic gel. <laughs> you, did you hear that Just round traveling? It whizzing through the air. So the best way to describe a slug is it is a solid one ounce projectile of you're never gonna wake up ever again. And the slug has just been an incredible kind of piece of the shotgun because of the fact that it has, I don't want to say knockdown power, that's a dumb word, but it, it has a tendency to really kill people because that is a lot of lead. And these are typically traveling between 1200 to 1400 feet per second. And that is one ounce of lead. That is a psychotic amount of energy being put into a human body. And in videos we've shown of us shooting these in slow motion, they are insane. But what the best part about the slug is to me, 
is that it can be used both close and far. And again, it all depends on the wadding on how accurate that's gonna be as well as the rifling on the slug itself. All right, right here we're at 180. Let's do Let's it. See if we can get that hit on the, uh, on the far target right there at 180. Just right. Just right. <laughs> Ping! That was so much nice. harder than I hit with. Sponsor for you today. Today's video is sponsored by Ammo Squared. So when I was in college, I really didn't have enough money to buy ammo in bulk. So what Ammo Squared lets you do is set your budget, set how much you're going to invest per month and then you select the calibers that you want when you want that shipping to occur and it allows you to buy in those smaller increments and come to your house so kind of think of it as banking and investing in ammo in some weird way so you're able to grow your ammo slowly over time you can ship with the click of the button or ship it on that schedule as it works for you and it can be easily swapped between calibers if you change your mind it is simple it is effective and it is going to help you grow that ammo stockpile. There are over 70 different caliber options, anything from your typical factory brands to different brands that you know and love. No minimum fees, there's no membership, there's nothing crazy like that. Just select your budget and go from there. Simple, and we wanna also point out that they are an Idaho-based company, and you know what? We really love Idaho, don't we, Micah? We're local. Yep. But Idaho. Idaho, the only state that is bordering Montana, where it kind of looks like Joe Biden is sniffing you. If you really look at Montana, it kind of looks like it's Joe Biden sniffing Idaho. It, it looks like, I'm just, I'm just telling you, man, just stare at it for a while. The image will get there. But, but stay away from Idaho if you're already not from here. There's nothing good here. Just, just potatoes. But in any case, a big thank you. I mean, I love potatoes. Sweet potatoes are the best. Fight me. Fight me. Fight me. Sweet potatoes are the best. To, to Ammo Squared, go and check them out. We're gonna have the link right below. Love you guys. Let's get back to the video. To video right now, it's gonna be the 590 Alpha One. It will continue to function long after you are dead, long after your sons are dead, and long after your bloodline is forgotten. So, the five- That's very grim dark. 90 Alpha One. Now, if you're not familiar with the Mossberg 590 Alpha One, it is a 12 gauge pump shotgun, which means after every trigger pull, you need to pump the weapon. So. After I have fired, eject that spent round, loads a fresh one from the tube. It holds eight plus one for a total of nine rounds. That is a lot of firepower in this particular shotgun. In addition to that, this particular guy can also mount a bayonet because you never know how close you're gonna get with a shotgun. And I can think of nothing more terrifying than having a sword at the end of your very deadly shotgun. Now, whoever thought of that, I'm willing to bet it was a Marine. Just throwing it out there. With the Mossberg 590A1, you essentially have a Mossberg 500. The Mossberg 500 is a legendary shotgun that's been in use for a really, really long time. And all the A1 did was be adapted to military use. Now, when the 500 was first made, there were some patents in place by Remington with the 870 that disallowed the Mossberg from probably being the shotgun that we have today. After those patents expired in about the 70s, the Mossberg 500 was updated with dual action rails. So the first thing I wanna talk about that makes the Mossberg 590 so dang reliable is the action itself. So what I mean by dual action rails is we have the rod right here, we have the rod right here, and these both work together when I push down on that pump mm -hmm. to pull that bolt to the rear. If we look at some older shotguns, like the legendary 1897 right here, there you, you go. can see that there's only one rod that is pushing on the barrel. There's nothing on this side. So it is an older design to have that single rod feature, and the gun can bind up a little bit more easily because that force of axis is not completely center when it's pushing back on the bolt. With the dual rails, you have a very, very reliable system. Uh, the only way the system is gonna break is if those rods break and they ain't breaking. So we have a very reliable system because of that and a very smooth system. What's nice about having the dual rods is it smooths up the action compared to those single rod guns. Mm. It's very quick to use. Now, 
From there, another reason that the 590 Alpha 1 is so reliable is they actually did change the design for the magazine tube itself. So on the tube on the 590A1 right here, you can simply unscrew the end right here mm -hmm. to get into the magazine in order to clean it out, clean out any debris, and it is fixed otherwise. This makes for a very robust and very simple system to clean. In addition to that, another thing that makes the 590 Alpha 1 so incredible is the barrel. So when the 590 was first designed, it uses the original 500 barrel, which is incredibly strong. It's a steel barrel going to a sleeve and the receiver is aluminum. This makes for a very lightweight design. The Navy, however, uh, has a problem with steel bulkheads, steel doors. These things have a tendency to impart a lot of weight onto a shotgun as it's being maneuvered through a ship. So the Navy asks that the barrel be thickened so it can resist those forces of those doors closing on it. The result ah, was a thicker barrel. The Navy, of course, wanted bigger, thicker, uncut. <laughs> and everything thicker. And <laughs> big and thick. I'm sorry, I just can't I can't help myself. I gotta make fun of the Navy. And the result was not the Marine Corps though. Um, you have a shotgun barrel that is damn near indestructible. This is a very robust barrel at this point. So those three things coming together make for a very reliable, very durable, and very lethal weapon. If we go and just talk tip to butt, just like the Navy likes, along with a thick barrel, we have a very simple design, which again is great because it keeps the cost down and allows the military to buy way more of these. So at the end right here, we don't have any type of choke. A choke is exactly what it sounds like. It is a piece of barrel at the end of the barrel that is going to constrict the lead shot that is typically used in bird hunting and clay pigeon hunting in order to give you a tighter pattern with different types of rounds. However, a choke is not necessary for slugs or for buck, and in fact, can be bad for those rounds. A choke, as it constricts down on a slug, can cause damage to that choke, can cause damage to the barrel. So, on your military shotguns, you typically have a cylindrical choke, which just means the barrel ends. And that is what we have on the 590 Alpha 1, and that is good for a military shotgun, as it can use all of your typical rounds, from your buck to your slugs to your mm -hmm. less lethals, without issue. Now, moving up from there, we have our front sight. As you can see, our front sight is fairly... <sighs> you know what? It's been so long since I last fired a weapon, like 2008. It's last time. Last time. Wow, geez. Where does the time go? And who is buzzing me? Stop calling me. Raised, and this helps when you're adding an optic rail and you have optics on there. It also makes for a very easy sight picture to get to. We have serrations at the very front of the front sight to ensure that we're not getting glare. And then we have a high vis paint on the front sight. It is extremely robust. It is not moving. It is not adjustable. The front sight is there. If we move back to the rear sight, there are different setups on the 590 Alpha 1. Some of them add a Picatinny rail so mm -hmm. you can add optics. But on this particular model, we opted for the classic model, which is simply an adjustable rear sight. Now, if you notice, the rear sight is a ghost ring that's very accurate to fire at long range but it's quite large for quick acquisition under pressure. If you notice also, the rear sight also has giant, very thick metal wings on either side of that peep sight. And the reason for that is as you drop this weapon, as you bang it around, as it goes through combat, it is not going to damage your rear sight and you're going to retain the zero on your weapon. And you do need to zero a shotgun because as you can see, those military rounds can still make very far shots very accurately. Moving from there, we do have on the front end cap right here, we do have that reduced diameter right there. That is specifically for mounting the bayonet to the front right here. I'm willing to bet a Marine did that. They said, hey, listen, we have a shotgun. But we're going to put a bayonet on it too. And no one argued back. Um, beyond that, we have the bayonet lug and we have our magazine tube for holding eight rounds of two, of two and three quarters. It's going to hold less of your larger rounds, or if you're using really shitty Turkish ammo, it's gonna hold even less because their size is freaking weird. On our pump itself, very simple, ribbed for your pleasure, easy to act. That's what all the ladies love. Actuate, no complaints there. There are a whole lot of aftermarket parts that you can add onto this with lights, with all that goodness, but really, 
a shotgun is a simple weapon. Keeping it simple is probably going to work the best. Now, if some changes were made to the 590 Alpha 1 in addition to the 500 that we haven't talked about. That was the addition of metal, um, replacing most of the plastic. So on the trigger guard right here, on the trigger, we do have metal components right there to ensure it is as strong as possible. Now, with all that being said, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, working mechanisms of the gun. On your typical shotgun, when you're loading it, you're going to start on your empty chamber. Once you've loaded that first round, you're going to push that um, action forward. And at that point, you can load the weapon. There's a lot of different ways to load it. And we don't want to get too far into it. Obviously, mm -hmm. there are a lot of shotgun loading techniques that are currently used on the competition market that don't necessarily work on combat shotguns because of the way they draw your eyes down for a long period of time. Because the one thing about shotguns that sucks is going to be keeping them topped off. There's not yeah. a lot of rounds. And when you load them, it is kind of a procedure. So showing you a typical reload procedure on a shotgun right here. So we start with the chamber back. Go ahead and there load that go. first round. And Going in. from here, what I prefer to do is there are a lot of pouches that allow you to scoop four rounds at once mm. and keep those in your palm. So I prefer to do that four round loading method on my shotgun in order to keep my rounds loaded. That allows me to keep my eyes mostly up. I'm not a huge person where I'm like, you have to always have your eyes on the target when you're loading, you know, because there's a bad guy that's gonna pop out. You should be loading and cover and stuff. At the same time, having a little bit of situational awareness as you're loading your weapon is going to be a good thing. Yeah. A lot of competitions tend to flip the gun upside down, load in many at once. It is quick, but again, we go for what's reliable in the military. Now to unload it or to unlock the weapon right here, we have this little lever right here. So I'm simply gonna depress that to the rear. Hold on, I, kn I know they edited that out. Unload it or to unlock the weapon right here. We have this little lever right here. So I'm simply jerk to the maximum speed in three, two, and an uno. We get to press that to the rear. Eject all my rounds. Make sure. Let's count those. Let's count them. This little lever right here. So I'm simply going to press that to the rear. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Eject all I my count rounds. Count seventeen. I count seventeen, even though it was edited in a loop. I think I counted seventeen. I think I'm in the right. Make sure it's safe. And that is your basic operation of your shotgun. Now we're gonna do what the best thing that we do. Hold on. on. Wait. You better make sure I got that right. Hold on. Or to unlock the weapon right here, we have this little lever right here. So I'm simply gonna depress that to the rear. Get Eject all my rounds, make sure. Okay, I counted 18 that time. I'm still correct. Safe. And that is your basic operation of your shotgun. Now, we're gonna do what the best thing that we do on Grantham. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna ghost that trigger together. So, weapons forward, weapons ready to fire. We're gonna go ahead and put our finger right there, put your finger right over mine, put a little unchained melody. There is no take up, we hit our immediate wall. There we go, there's that first stage going through. About nine pound pull. Off the wall, about five from the reset, five pounds. Beautiful trigger in the shotgun. There's not a whole lot to it. Now we have safety right here. If you notice the safety is right at the rear of the shotgun. What's great about this is whether you're left or right-handed, it's going to be easy to get to. The shotgun is inherently ambidextrous, which is nice. So forward is fire back is safe and of course you have a little red dot to let you know that you are ready to fire from here going back to the sock the sock is very basic you have a big recoil pad at the back here recoil pad basically being a big old section of rubber mm -hmm. with holes going through it a big old rubber that way it's going to absorb a little bit of the recoil because one thing that you can say about a pump action shotgun is that all that force is going directly into you so compared to like a semi-automatic like a benelli m4 that is a much softer weapon to fire that is a much faster weapon to fire and because it's a using those recoil forces to operate the mechanism there's a lot less recoil force going back into you compare that to a pump action shotgun every time you fire that you're eating the full power of that 12 gauge buck and it's a little bit more tough on you so i tend to get um, a little bit more rocked when i'm shooting a 12 gauge pump action especially all day like today we're firing a couple hundred rounds of 12 uh, that sounds like so much fun. Full power. That is a lot to go through. 
but it is worth it for how lethal this system is. When it comes to shotguns in the military, I just don't foresee them going away for a long time. And they never should. Who's suggesting they should go away? Is it somebody in Congress? Vote them out. Just because of all the jobs they can perform and with the addition of drones into combat, some of the best ways to take down drones is using birdshot through mm -hmm. a shotgun in order to get that wide area effect and take those things down. So as much as we might wanna say shotguns are going away, I just don't foresee that happening anytime. any time. The pump action will probably eventually fade away, but it's hard to argue with how reliable, simple, and robust it is. So guys, thank you for watching our video today on the 590 Alpha One. Micah, what do you like about the 590 Alpha One? I like that I don't have to do anything to it. Wise words, Micah, I agree. Yes. The 590 Alpha One, the Mossberg 500, shotguns in general are very affordable, very easy to get your hands on. I think it's an excellent thing to have in your repertoire of weapons because they can do so many things. Get them, they are useful for military, they're useful for civilians. If you get a breacher model, highly recommend it. Guys, thank you so much for watching and we got nothing else for you today. But I don't think of you guys today, that advice, forgiveness. Don't focus on people who have wronged you, focus on moving forward, forgive them, move forward with your life. It's not healthy to obsess over people who have wronged you. It's just gonna take more time away. I'm listening to it again. I don't think of you guys today, that advice, forgiveness. Don't focus on people who have wronged you. Focus on moving forward. Forgive them. Move forward with your life. It's not healthy to obsess over people who have wronged you. It's just going to take more time away for you. Life is healthy to focus on moving forward. That advice. Thank you so much for watching, and we got nothing else for you today. I don't think of you guys today, that advice, forgiveness. Don't focus on people who have wronged you. Focus on moving forward. Forgive them. Move forward with your life. It's not healthy to obsess over people who have wronged you. It's just going to take more time away for you. Life is. It's a great video. 10 out of 10. Um, the last few seconds kind of hit me in the gut, okay? <clears throat> Ran to a lot of snakes. But he's right. Forgiveness is necessary. All right. What do I think about this? Okay, so why does the U.S. military still use pop, uh, pop, pop, pump action, pop action, pump action shotguns? First of all, I think it's uh, uh, a great that it's still in. Uh, obviously, folks, if you are a firearm owner, please be safe. And to those in the military, hey, shotgun is your friend. Shotgun is life. Shotgun will always be there. And it won't stab you in the back because it's there to, one, you can put a bayonet on and stab somebody else in the back <laughs> and send rounds down range. And so there you go. And also, uh, huge, huge shout out to, again, Grand Thumb. That last advice was, uh, well, that, that was a gut check. But that's why I like Grand Thumb, and that's why all of you should be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and support, and follow Grand Thumb on all of his social media. Check out all of his sponsors for his uh, channel. You know, if you want to know more, go ahead and hit the links, because the original link to this video is in the description box below. Check them out. Do the right thing. Come on, folks. And uh, I guess my advice is forgiveness is key, but... It's a long journey. Take good care of yourselves, okay? Oh, and also, really, really, really short and simple. Why does the U.S. military still use pump-action shotguns? Because they're cool. That's why. There we go. All right. Bye.